Little wins, right? Yeah. I did it, and there's Tom. Secret play. Welcome to Retired Time Productions. So I'm taking my first looks at the vector system here, and I've just got it spread out on the bench. Basically, I've got my Easy UHF receiver hooked on here with one servo cable and the uh, SPPM configuration. So I'm just going to have all my channels going over one wire right here. And probably won't be using these servo cables since I'm using the SPPM. Now over here, I have my video out just going to a cable right here just ignore this battery lead, not using it. But I just got the video on the ground going to this cable here which goes over here to my monitor so I can see the OSD display. Normally the video transmitter would go onto that one, the Video TX. That's what it says on this plug, Video TX. Now this plug here has the camera, which was simple. I just hooked the wire from the camera to that plug. Very simple, no soldering there. And over here I have my uh, power module, the vector power module plugged in and I have both of the 12 volt wires hooked up. I didn't use the 5 volt one they provided, I just used the two 12's which feed these two plugs for 12 volts. And over here I just have my battery laying here where I can plug it in. And then of course I added this little mod to my power module so I have a tap coming off that goes to a to a UBEC here that I got from Ready Made RC, 5 volt UBEC. And I need that, that's very important because this servo output bus here does not provide any voltage to the servo. So you got to provide your own. So I'm using this UBEC. Also, there's no voltage going to the receiver without putting voltage on this bus. So this provides voltage to the receiver and to the servos when I plug them on. This is the wired version of the vector power module because it has these wires on. Some come with XT60 connectors already on them or Dean's connectors. But I ordered the wired version. Now I'm going to do a modification here and I've slipped off the cover which was just held on some by some sticky tape which I removed by slipping an X-Acto knife between the tape and the module and then slip the cover off. It's just some soft plastic. And what I'm going to do is solder on, I've already done it, solder on a tap for a UBEC on the ESC side right here. So anything that's on this tap will be measured. The current will be measured uh, by the current sensor. And then I'm going to solder on some XT60 connectors. One that goes to the ESCs and then one for the battery over here. Now here's a closer view of where I soldered on the tap for the JSD connector. So there it is all soldered. So that's the basic setup I've got right there. Now one thing I wondered about is where does the airspeed sensor plug in? Well I found out that the cable that comes in the bag here actually plugs in the bus right here on the GPS so it kind of daisy chains with the GPS on this bus so the GPS has two bus connections and the airspeed sensor also has two bus connections so you could probably daisy chain another device off that okay so let's configure the easy UHF 8 channel light receiver and the vector flight controller with OSD now I want to apologize for the length of this video because some of these configurations are kind of involved. But let's get started. So first let's launch the Easy UHF configuration tool and choose the Easy UHF 8 channel light which is what I have. And then we're going to read the settings from it. Now I already have the latest firmware which is 1.5. Let's put in the 12 channel mode and then update the settings. All right, now we'll go to the servo mapping and read those settings. Now in the servo output, on channel 1, we want to set that to PPM MUX. And then on the inputs, we want to set channel 11 as RSSI and channel 12 as link quality. And then go ahead and update those settings. 
Okay, so next we're going to launch the vector configuration tool and connect the vector by USB cable. Alright, first thing, let's update the firmware. And we're going to go to the latest firmware, and that's automatic. It just goes there. So once that's done, we want to go to the uh, RC configuration. No, actually the airframe configuration. And choose the airframe, which is the traditional fixed wing. And later on, we're going to have to confirm this with the OSD using our radio once that's set up. Okay, now the RC configuration. And we're going to go in and set channel 11 to RSSI and channel 12 to link quality. We have to run the uh, RX analysis wizard later. So let's apply this and then save the configuration. And then let's set up the radio. So I'm using the FR Sky Tyrannus right here and I'm just going to go ahead and press the menu button and then this is my model here I already have it in the twin star I created a new model right here I'm just going to hit the page down now this is my model setup and the first thing I had to do was make sure that the internal transmitter was off so set that to off because I think it defaults to on when you create a new model then come down and put the external RF, which is my Easy UHF JR module. That's on the back here, right there on the back. Plugged into the socket. Okay, so I want to make sure that my JR module is set to PPM mode right here. It used to be that this was 8. It was sitting there like that at default. And so I went in and set that to 12. And then it just automatically comes up with uh, 30.5 uh, and 300 here, which seems to work fine. All right. And then down here we have master for the mode. If I can sh show you that. Now, it's just at the bottom here. It says master. That should be in master. So that's uh, what you need to do there. I'm going to exit out of it. Hit menu and then page over to the inputs which is menu 5. What I did was I added on channel 5 here I added the mode switch and made it SB. For me SB is this switch right here and I also need to add the sub mode switch and I'll just do that the same way I added the SB. Just press enter here go in give it a name Okay, I only had four letters to put in, so let's put sub M for sub mode. You can put whatever you want there. But, and let's go down to the source, and I'm going to make that SA, just by flicking the SA switch. There we go. Hit enter again and exit out, and we're done. So now we got our two switches. Also, I had to go into the mixer, which is screen 6 here, and go ahead and set the mode and sub-mode in there, too, and then exit. All right, got them in there. Okay, I've got all of my channels in right in the mixer now. I had to swap the... Uh, throttle down to channel 3 so I got aileron elevator throttle rudder and then SB and SA for my mode switches mode and sub modes okay now that we have the easy UHF receiver configured and we got the RSSI and link quality set up in it and we have our radio switches and other things set up we can now run the RX analysis wizard okay Let's start out. We got our 12 channels. And then we'll go next. And move mode switch to a different position. Do that. Click next. Now move throttle stick all the way up. And click next. Okay, throttle stick down. Click next. Move your aileron stick all the way to the left. All right. Do that. Click next. 
Try to click next. There we go. Move aileron stick all the way back. Oh, elevator stick all the way back. All right, like that. Click next. Okay, move the rudder stick all the way left. Next. Move sub mode switch if used to a different position. That's this one. And click next. Rotate your gain knob if used to a different position. I don't have a gain knob, but if I did, I'd probably use this one. But I don't have one. I never set it up. Okay, gain knob not detected. Uh, we'll just go next. Move your flap switch if used. I don't have a flap switch either. That isn't used with your normal airplane. Flaps is actually if you're using flapperons. So I'm not going to use that. So I'll just go next. And not detected. Now, each serial channel you are using should have a channel number in the RX monitor. Click Next if OK. And you can see right here actually where they're all located and they look good. So I'm just going to go Next. OK, now the wizard will learn about your stick throws, safe settings, and RSSI readings. Turn your transmitter off now and click Next. OK, so I'm going to turn it off and click Next. Turn your transmitter back on. Welcome to Tarani's. Switch warning. Ah, well, that's because I got the mode switches. Okay, now I'll click Next. Okay, move the aileron stick all the way to the left. Do that. Hold it while you click Next. Okay, elevator stick all the way back for a climb. That would be like this. Pulling out. Next. Move your rudder stick all the way to the left. Hold it. Click Next. Alright. Center your sticks. Okay. Center your sticks and set your throttle to your typical cruising flight position. I'll just put it on 50%. If you don't know the throttle cruise position, just set it in the midpoint, which is what I did. Click Next. So everything should be in the center. doesn't say anything about your switches, just the sticks. All right, Next. Move your throttle stick to your typical climbing or higher speed flying. So then I'd probably have it, I'm going to put it up about 75%. Actually, you can see on the screen here what percentage you got. So let's say I put uh, I can't get 75. I'll just go with 78. Next. Move your throttle stick all the way down, off, click next. The wizard is complete. Woohoo! Now we click finished. Okay, now we can confirm our air that our airframe is actually a plane now that we have our mode switches set up. So I'm going to turn on the radio. Welcome to Toronto's. Okay, now I'm going to plug in the flight controller. The vector flight controller is now on and we got the splash screen and it says over here, let me see if I can get out of the way of the camera. Fine. It says over here, please confirm the air type by click mode to Accept type, so I think that's this mode switch. So let's see what happens. I don't see it saying anything about the uh, frame type now, though. It looks like it solved that. It had to turn it off and back on. At first, I was just moving it once and not turning it back off, and it didn't work. But I think it's worked now. Let's confirm that. We'll just go ahead and unplug it, turn it back on again, see what we get. Yeah, it's good now. Okay, now that we have the radio all set up, let's go ahead and do our flight modes. So, if 
I flip these switches right here, you can see that the modes change on the screen right there. Right here they change. So let's select what we want here. So I'm going to start out with 2D no hold and then I'm going to put in my sub mode in this one, 2D with sub mode and I'm not going to be doing any 3D aerobatics. Uh, so no 3D aerobatics so I'm going to go and make this um, basically like manual mode stabilize off and then over here I'm gonna put no hold so basically when we're in 2D sub mode it's gonna be the same as this top one it's gonna be 2D no hold and then if we flip the sub mode switch it'll go to loiter right here and then finally we're gonna have return to home right there so that's how I want to do it. So I'm just going to go ahead and save that. We haven't been saving our configuration, so we might want to do that. So I'm on the desktop here. I'm going to go into my vector and easy UHF right there. And then I'll just say vector setup. Or vector, what do they call it? Yeah, config. Config and just save it. Alright, so we have the Easy UHF uh, RSSI and uh, link quality here uh, already in our channel mappings but we need to make sure they show up on the OSD screen so let's go to the OSD setup right over here and then we'll go to advanced and go down to the GPS receiver and GPS signals and you'll see right here that the uh, RSSI is already on the screen by default but the link quality is not showing up so what we can do is come over here and then click on RX link quality and then it fills it in right here but if you look up here it's not on the screen yet. There's our SSI, but there's no link quality. So what we have to do now is go ahead and apply it. So when I press this apply button, it should appear on the screen up here. Let's see what happens. And there it is. Now if I turn on my radio, Welcome to Toronto's. I'll just wait and see what happens. One more beat, and there they come up. So we got about 100% on both of them. Okay, here's a quick demo on how to use the on-screen menus. You just toggle the mode switch twice within a second, like that, and the menu will come up. And then you can scroll down through the menus with the elevator stick. Down goes down, up goes up. You can go into a menu by just going right with the aileron and you can get back out of a menu by going left and then you can either just keep going left to toggle out of the menu or use the mode switch to get out of the menu so that was just my first impressions of how to set up the vector it's looking pretty good I got quite a few features already there's the uh, RSSI and the link quality and I got six satellites even though I'm down in the basement and here's my voltage and amperage milliamp hours and the two ladders are here on the sides and artificial horizon and GPS coordinates have shown up and got the compass heading down here so looks like it's working pretty well right now one of the servos hooked up right here to the elevator you can see that's working so it looks like the easy UHF and everything is in there and operating. So really this is just to get everything sort of hooked up so that I can then mount it in the plane over here. I wanted to know how all the wiring went first and then try to fit it into the fuselage. After all this is a build video series and we just want to see how we can get it in there. Thanks for watching. Hit your button.